Hi, my name is James Clem. You may have heard some trending information about Emacs. Number one, it's been around for a long time. We know it's going to work. We have good 10 year plus evidence for that. The other trending information that you'll hear right now is that there's some new prep guidelines. <laughs> this is quite exciting. I've actually been using these prep guidelines for quite a long time. If you've been in one of my lectures or to my hands-on classes, I really promote the conservative prep, particularly when we have enamel in the anterior smile zone. Why? Because with a thinner prep and a thinner margin, I can make Emacs really look attractive. There are two important metrics that we need to consider as clinicians when we're placing a restoration in the mouth. Number one is what's the fracture toughness, which is probably the most important metric we need to consider, and what is the flexural strength. Fracture toughness is how a restoration can break around a defect, and there is an IOS standard for testing that. In our CAD CAM clinical theater, if we're doing a single restoration, we want that fracture toughness to be two or greater. That's really, really important to consider that. In addition to that, we're looking at flexural strength. For a number of years now, we've understood the flexural strength for Emacs to be 360 megapascals. After further assessing, Ivoclera has now come to an understanding that the flexural strength is actually more around 500 megapascals, and that's both for the milled and the pressable. With 500 megapascal of flexural strength, what does that do for us? Well, we can reconsider how we prepare. Now, for years, I've been using the conservative approach anteriorly, even in premolars, particularly if I have enamel. Ibuclair is now recommending one millimeter of thickness on the occlusal table if you're going to bond it in. You want at least one millimeter rather than 1.5, which has been the prior recommendation. Now, when we think about prep design, we have to think about morphology as well and what we're preparing. Because quite often, if you want good morphology, you're going to have to reduce more than one millimeter if you're using this new guideline. So in my book, I'm still using 1.5 to get one millimeter so I can have a reasonable occlusal table and make sure it functions well in the mouth. The other caveat that we need to consider is if you're using a buildup material or you're doing a core buildup. So if these restorations are over a buildup or core buildup, you're going to need more thickness. I wouldn't go with the one millimeter. When I'm over a buildup or a core buildup, I'm going with two. Why? Because that substructure is going to flex more. So when we consider this, not to get confused, particularly aesthetically, I have found that it's all about the enamel. If I can keep an enamel rim in my prep, I'm going to have better support. Let's break this information down and make it quite simple. I'm a simple guy. Number one, when I prepare, I want smooth preps. When I prepare, I prefer enamel on the margins. Why? Enamel is nature's coping. When I have enamel on the margins, I can go thinner with my margin and get a better aesthetic blend. These are concepts that I teach in my class and I've been using them for years, even with Impress. So I know they work. The more enamel I have, the more conservative I can be in my axial reduction, particularly in my margin style, even out to a feather. If it's on an onlay or anterior type of veneer, I can go with feather margins with Emacs. For one millimeter of occlusal thickness, I don't want to have a buildup material there. I want it to be the tooth. Why? Because I don't want something flexing underneath that. If I do have a core buildup, I'm going to go at least with two millimeters. So here's a safe way. Just reduce 1.5. That will give you enough room for good morphology and stay within your one millimeter criteria. If there's a buildup material within your preparation and the larger your buildup material is of that restoration, then you want more occlusal reduction. If there's one factor that I reflect on in my 30 years, it's all about the occlusal reduction, even with gold. With enough occlusal reduction, you can optimize the occlusal morphology, which allows you to control your contact points. The amount of reduction is reflective on more than just material. The good news is that Emacs allows us to be very conservative in reduction. But in addition to the material, we have to think of optimal design, 
occlusal force dynamics and controlling that occlusal morphology to get the best results for a long-term outcome. Thankfully, with this reassessment, it makes me feel so much better in my clinical theater. I can be more creative with my preps. I know that I have that strength in those cases where I may not be able to get as much occlusal reduction. It provides me better morphology appeal on my occlusal table and also better aesthetics. This is a material that's proven. And now that we have this new trending metric, I have more certainty emotionally that I've been doing it right for a long time. And I know it works because I've seen that evidence in my clinical theater and it should give you more peace of mind with your restorative care.